Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and now HCAT Television over in Hollison tonight. It is Ashland Post 77, who is 9 and 3 on the season, taking on 6 and 7 Waltham Post 156. A slight delay to the start as Waltham was waiting on a couple players to show up, but they have indeed showed up, and we are ready for baseball on this beautiful 76 degree sunny day. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan, our cameraman for this evening's game. It is the fourth game this week for Ashland Post 77. So far, they are two and one this week. Let's take a look at the Waltham batting order as they are just about set to step to the plate. Leading things off is the right fielder, Thomas Mazoulis. Matt Johnson, the shortstop, batting second. Ryan Williams, the left fielder, hitting third. John Hodge hitting cleanup and playing second base. James Juno, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Alex Miller, the third baseman, hitting sixth. Justin Morin, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Rob Daly, the catcher, hitting eighth. And Calvin Canoni, the center fielder, hitting ninth. With the Ashland defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Thank you, Tom. Cole Bla Glassburn is playing. I'll say that shot. I'll start that again. Cole Glassburn is playing third base. Jackson Horning at shortstop. Ronan Bates at second base. Zach Pesson at first. Jonathan Pesson at left. Brad Seymour in center. Drew Rankatori in right. Sean Jewett behind the plate. Catching Dominic Cavanaugh. And we are ready for baseball as Dom Cavanaugh set to deliver the first pitch to Missoulis. And it's in there for a strike. Waltham pulled off a victory over Sudbury last night, a 5-4 win in walk-off fashion to improve to 6-7 and seven on the season as Cavanaugh set to deliver the second pitch of the game. That one inside, a 1-1 one and one count. No biggie with a win over Sudbury, right, Dom? They're in the cellar. Hey, a win's a win. All right. Ashland Post 77 with an impressive win of their own last night. As this is driven in a left center. That's going to get down for a base hit. And Missoula's going to try for two. He will head over to second and be safe with the leadoff double. And that'll bring up Matt Johnson, the shortstop. So the leadoff man in scoring position for Waltham. Post 77 pulled off a 6-3 to three victory yesterday over Newton. They led most of the game, but things got a little scary in the six when Newton put up three runs, made it a 4-3 game, but Post 77 was able to respond and put up three more of their own for some extra insurance and pull off the 6-3 to three victory to improve to 9-3 and three on the season as Kavanaugh checks in at second runner back. Boy, that, boy, that ball got down by Missoula's. It sort of scooted between the outfielders, Pesson and Seymour. That one's fouled away by Matt Johnson. Dom Cavanaugh has had a good season so far on the mound for post 77. He has pitched in two games, started one. He's thrown six innings, a 1.16 ERA. Dom uh, features a fastball curveball change. Line up and the pitch. And there's a bunt for a strike. Checking at second as the runner slides back just safe. 0 oh 2 count now on Johnson. And Waltham, they started off the season a little rough, but they have been stringing together a few wins as of late. Of course, it's the, I believe it's the top five that would make the postseason with one of those teams first place team having the bye round in the first round. That pitch up high. Friday night's game against Lowell. Uh, should be a very important game. Knock off an undefeated team. Certainly should be. Kavanaugh looks over at second and is just about set to deliver. And this is hit high in the air up the right side in foul territory and not caught, but no harm done, as it was in foul territory. Drew Rankatori out there trying to track it down. Good thing he let it drop. Missoula would have had an easy tag up there. A few uh, changes in the defense for post 77 with 
Cole Glassburn at third, Rankatori in right field. A few players missing tonight for post 77 due to prior commitments. It's Dom Cavanaugh set to deliver from the stretch. And this is up the left side, and that is going to get through the reach of the shortstop Hornung, and a run is going to come around to score for Waltham. It's one to nothing, an RBI single for Matt Johnson. And that is certainly not the way you want to start things if you're post-77. Ryan Williams, the left fielder, will now step in. It's nope. fortunate Johnson didn't go take second on the throw. No outs in the inning still. Couple of hard hit balls right off the bat. Dom Cavanaugh working from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. 0 and 1. A few game notes this week for post 77. They are 2 and 1 on the week so far. And Ashland has outscored their opponents 10 to 5 overall. Team ERA of 1.67. The pitching has been fantastic for Ashland. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. Cavanaugh set to deal. And this is up the left side. That's going to trickle through into the gap. It goes into left field, tracked down by Pesson. Two aboard with no outs as Matt Johnson advances to second. Ryan Williams safely aboard at first base. I'll bring up John Hodge, the second baseman. Well, a bit of a rally here for Waltham in this top of the first. They've got to have a hole in their lineup somewhere. These are not cheap hits. Runners on base with a bit of a lead. That pitch up high, 1-0. and Dom Cavanaugh pitching and also in the lineup, and he's had a good week hitting-wise so far. Four for six overall. There's a swing and a miss, checking at first. And the runner is out. Picked off by Jewett, what a throw up the line. One away. Did you see who made that call, whether the home plate umpire made it? or That the... was the infield umpire who made that call. I don't know how he could see it with his back, Pesson's back turn to the play, but take the out, back pick by Jewett, a rarity for sure. That is certainly something you don't want if you're Waltham. You get some nice early momentum, you get a run in, and then you get picked off at first. Two and one count on Hodge. Sean Jewett is loving it right now. He just can't see his face. Line up in the pitch. This is hit in the air over to left field, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Here comes Matt Johnson. He's going to try to score, and he will pretty easily. It's a 2-0 lead for Waltham, an RBI single for the cleanup man, John Hodge. Kavanaugh is getting tagged. I wonder if Coach Johnson's going to get somebody up and throwing. James Juno, the pitcher, will step in now. It's certainly a pretty rare sight to see Dom Cavanaugh getting tagged like this. He had a 1.40. ERA during the high school season and eight appearances on the mound. A pitch down low. He started four games during the high school season and he went four and two overall. Try to start Juno off with something other than a fastball. The clocker delivers, that's fouled away. One and one. I believe someone made a nice catch out there. Who's that 85 year old woman out there? Did you see her? <laughs> Cavanaugh from the stretch. Runner on 
on second, one out. That's fouled away. One and two. The only out coming courtesy of a back pick by Sean Jewett. I don't think the Ashland fans expected this right off the bat. Certainly not. Well, there was a little bit of waiting around before the game. and I wonder if uh, maybe his arm started to get a little bit restless as that's fouled away. He was won by 5.30, so the game started at 6. We had a half an hour of rest. Possible. Set to deliver. Swing and a miss. Out number two. That'll bring up Alex Miller, the third baseman. Shading Miller to left. That pitch is inside, 1-0. And the pitch. Another inside pitch, 2 0. Waltham has played two runs so far in this top of the first. Great start, four post 156. They're starting to get nervous that they might have to forfeit today, waiting for a couple of players. But they must be certainly glad those players showed up now. Runner back safely to second as Kavanaugh steps off. He's getting kind of a greedy lead, Hodge was. There he's going to go. Back to the bag. I'm sorry, I saw that out of the corner of my eye. Two and one count. Line up and the pitch. Side three and one. Kavanaugh from the stretch. And that's a walk. Two on, two outs. Two runs in already for Waltham. Justin Moore in the first baseman to step in. Kavanaugh is going to take a walk behind the mound and compose himself. Well, this is certainly a big game for post-77. We've got a huge game tomorrow against Lowell. First place undefeated Lowell, who's 10-0 so far on the season. That pitch down low. Of course, post-77 would love to get in those top two spots to get the... Uh, Home field advantage in the postseason. That is inside. That hit him. And that hit him. Base is loaded. Rob Daly, the catcher, will step up, but not before assistant coach Andrew Keim will have a word with Tom Cavanaugh, along with catcher Sean Jewett. Well, a rough start for Cavanaugh, to say the least. Hopefully uh, he'll settle down in the innings to come and he can get out of this with no further harm. But not the way Post 77 expected this one to go here early on. Daly's got a chance to do some damage with the bases juiced. Daly at a Waltham High School will graduate in two years. The class of 2020, that pitch down low. Younger team for Waltham 
this season. A lot of uh, upcoming juniors on the rosters. That one's filed away, one and one. Waltham's got some length to them. Some of their players are six foot or better. That pitch down low, and that's going to get by the catcher. The run's going to try to score, and he will. Three nothing. I have to give him a wild pitch on that. Yep, John Hodge comes around to score on the wild pitch. And the rough start for post 77 just got a whole lot rougher. Daly steps back in, facing a 2-1 count. And we will see some early warm-up action from post 77, it looks like. Line up and the pitch. This is hit high in the air over to the left side, and it is not caught, but it is foul. Two and two. Andrew Sternick warming up. He was warming last night, along with Matt Tomaselli. Well, with uh, Natick defeating Medford yesterday, that puts post 77 in second place by two games. They would certainly like to maintain that lead. So I think they will be uh, pretty quick to pull the plug if Kavanaugh continues to struggle as there is strike three to Rob Daly. The top of the first comes to an end, but Waltham does play three runs. It's a three nothing post 156 lead as we head to the bottom of the first on HCAM and WACA TV. Heading to the bottom of the first, a three nothing lead for Waltham as they rallied in the top of the inning. Let's take a look at the post 77 batting order. The pitcher number 22, Dom Cavanaugh leading things off. Ronan Bates, the second baseman batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop hitting third. Zach Pesson, the first baseman hitting cleanup. Sean Jewett, the catcher hitting fifth. John Pesson, the left fielder hitting sixth. Brad Seymour, the center fielder hitting seventh. Drew Rankatori, the right fielder, hitting eighth, and Cole Glassburn, the third baseman, hitting ninth. And with the Waltham Post 156 defensive alignment, here is Larry Sacklad. Alex Miller at third, Matt Johnson at short, John Hodge at second base, Justin Morin at first, Ryan Williams in left, Calvin Canoni in center, Thomas Mazoulis in right, Rob Daly is catching. James Jeannot. Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, going to start things off. He's been red hot with the bat as of late. This week, four for six at the plate. Also two walks and a run driven in. So he's hoping to continue that momentum. And they will certainly need the offense trailing early, three to nothing. Taking a look at the top of the first. Tom Azula started off with a double, then an RBI single by Matt Johnson, followed by another single by Ryan Williams. John Hodge would single and drive in Matt Johnson, then end up coming around to score on a wild pitch to make it three to nothing. Let's see how Juno deals with the mound, being a big, tall, lanky kid. Pitcher versus pitcher for the first post-77 at-bat of the day. That one inside, 1-0, oh. a little chin music. Always gets the uh, dugout going when there's a nice inside pitch. Leg left and the pitch, fouled away. Get decent velocity. Not Nolan Ryan stuff, but decent. Take you through the zone five standings in just a bit. As Juno is set to deliver. 
There's a strike. Lowell at the top of the standings with a 10 and 0 record. Ashland at, in second, nine and three. Medford at seven and five. Natick at eight and five. Bill Rick at five and six. Waltham at six and seven. Wind up in the pitch. And this is tattooed over to left field, but it is caught by Ryan Williams. Hopefully that won't be a repeat of the two games earlier this week where they hit the balls on the screws, but just right at people. Yep. Ronan Bates, the second baseman, will step in. Continuing on with the zone five standings, Hudson at five and eight, North Chelmsford at four and nine, Sudbury at three and nine, and Newton at two and seven. Line up and the pitch. That one down low. Ronan Bates played club ball at University of Lowell. Nice to stay in the game. You're not going to make the uh, varsity club. Like lift and the pitch. Inside. I wonder if that's a message pitch. No, no. When Ronan was younger in his Little League days, he was an excellent, excellent catcher. Maybe because he was the only one willing to catch, but he was really, really good. Line up and the pitch. That is low. At least we can hear the umpire tonight, see where his hands are going, unlike the last few nights. 3-0 count. Bates pulls back the bunt, and there's a strike. Interesting. He backed out of the box and called strike. Must have been a breaking pitch. Ronan Bates, a 2017 graduate of Ashland High School. So there's another strike, three and two. Watch a BP tonight. Cole Glassburn and Zach Pesson were hitting bombs. Gets a piece of this one over to left center, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Past the outfielder it goes. Bates rounding first, heading over to second. Is he going to try for third? Yes, he is. The throw in is not in time, and it's a triple for Ronan Bates. A one-out triple with Jackson Horning, the shortstop, coming to the plate. Mr. Everything can get it within one run and one, one swing of the bat. Jackson Horning having a rough week so far at the plate. One for nine overall, has scored two runs, hoping to change that luck around right here. Bates with a slight lead at third. There's strike one to Horning. There's a big hole between third and short. The third baseman is holding Ronan Bates on. I, I'm not sure why. Rarely see a pitcher throw over to third to pick off. Upstairs. One and one. And we're going to have time called by the pitcher, Rob Daly. The catcher will come out to talk to his pitcher, James Juno. James Juno is out of Waltham High School, graduated this year. Six foot five, 185 pound righty. He's 6'5? Six 6'5. Five? Six five. Waltham High, home of Fred Smurlis, for those who watch Comcast. Line up and the pitch. That's fouled off, one and two. By the time Juno gets down the mound, he's not throwing from 60 feet. Looks like he's throwing from 55. The one two pitch. Count will stay one and two. Fourth game of the week for post 77. They'll actually play six games this week. They also play on Sunday. Actually, I guess technically Sunday's next week. Well, they'll play Sunday, Monday, 
two on Thursday. This is hit in the air over to left field, and it is caught. Bates from third going to tag, and he shall score easily, and he will. It's a 3-1 ball game. Job well done by Hornung. He's five foot short of getting it out of here. Two outs, one in. A 3-1 ball game as Zach Pesson, the first baseman, will step into the batter's box. Last two games, he's been crushing the ball. Line up in the pitch. That one down low, but called a strike. Oh and one. The righty awaits the pitch. Inside, one and one. Zach Pesson had a uh, triple big last triple night. Yeah. last night. Two RBI triple in the bottom of the sixth, which gave Post 77 some insurance, made it a 6-3 ball game, and that's how it would stay in the win over Newton as that one's fouled away. It doubled the night before, but it's hit to right center up against the fence out there. One and two count on Pesson. I think Ben Thomas and Louis Rossi are out at UMass Amherst picking their classes for next year. That pitch down low, two and two. Well, with the late start to this game in an extended first inning, daylight could come into play here if the innings keep going like this. Clock is already at 6.30. We're still in the first. And this is up the middle, past the reach of the third baseman, past the reach of the shortstop. It looks like it went through his legs, a two-out single for Pesson. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. Sean Jewett's going to catch all five games this week. Says he loves it. Takes a nice bath after every game. A lot of innings to catch in a week. Certainly is. Pitch down low, 1-0. and oh. He seems like he could do it okay, though. Yeah. Sunset will be at 821 tonight, Tom. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike, 1-1. One one. FYI. We'll have to keep an eye on that. With the way this game's going, it could get to that time. Well, that's sunset. We're not talking dusk. Checking at first, pretty close, but runner back safe. Almost threw that away. I think you have to be careful here on the base paths. You have not had as much offense as you would like throughout the week. Can't have runners getting picked off. That's fouled Ooh. away oh, to the Waltham dugout and almost hit one of the coaches. There you go, take out the coaching staff. Huh. One and two count. I think Pesson will be taken off here. That is a fair ball caught by Juno, no problem. Crushed and it. that will retire the side. One run in for post 77. It's a 3-1 Waltham lead as we head to the top of the second on HCAM and WACA TV. Heading to the top of the second, Dom Cavanaugh back out there, but certainly hoping it was a little bit better than the top of the first. Waltham was able to play three runs in the top half of the first inning. And Dom Cavanaugh threw 31 pitches that inning. Certainly a lot of pitches to start off this game, Larry. Well, I don't know how you would know that he pitched 31 pitches, but well, he, threw, just, he threw 31 well, pitches. Was, That's a lot. I was lot. keeping count the whole time. Oh, okay. As Calvin Kanani, the center fielder, steps in. Ninth hitter in the batting order, four post 156. And he'll put this one up the middle over to the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Ronan Bates gets the job done, four to three on the out. That'll bring up Thomas Mazoulis, the leadoff hitter. One pitch, one out. Mazoulis had a hard hit the first inning. 
<laughs> That's what you need after throwing 31 in the first. Dom Cavanaugh set to deliver to Missoulas. He doubled in the first inning to get the rally started. There's strike one. You know, sometimes Dom Cavanaugh has been known to have a rough start in the first inning, but then settle down. Perhaps this is one of those situations. Well, if he could stay within 15 pitches. This is up the left side. Slow roller picked up by the shortstop. Bobbled, and he's going to drop it. Missoulas will be safe on the error. What a horrible, horrible, horrible skin of an infield. It certainly is. Works both ways, but. Matt Johnson, the shortstop, will step in. That was a rare drop by Jackson Horning. The infield skin is just not true. It's hard to get a read whether you're going to get a quick short hop at the end. Cavanaugh working from the stretch. One on, one out. He's going. Runner taking off. Jouette throws up, and it is out. in time. Sean Jouette recording his second pickoff of the game there as Mazoulis caught stealing. Well, actually, the first out he got was a pickoff. This is a caught stealing out. But Sean Jouette recording two outs single handedly as Matt Johnson. We'll continue his at bat. The umpire is uh, giving Jackson Horning some uh, advice or uh, having a little talk with him. Maybe Jackson said something to the runner. What a throw by Jewett. I didn't think he was going to get him because uh, he had a really good jump. It was very close. That's a what for pitch by. But you know what? That's what Waltham gets for uh, <laughs> postponing the start of the game. <laughs> right. They should have forfeited. I'm glad they didn't. Who wouldn't want to see some baseball on a right. Thursday afternoon? Wind up in the pitch. The There's pitch a just a little low, I thought. But goes in Ashley in favor. Well, in any situation, of course, uh, all these teams work with each other to try to make it so there is no forfeits because after two forfeits you get in some trouble as this is a slow roller up the first base side that is fair and a three unassisted ground out Zach Pesson able to handle it and it was a five or six pitch inning it was a three batter inning due to a nice job by Sean Jewett catching Missoula's stealing and we will head to the bottom of the second. Waltham does lead Ashland 3-1 to one on a HCAM, HCAT, and WACA-TV. <laughs> bottom of the second inning, due up for post 77, 6, 7, and 8. John Peston, Brad Seymour, Drew Rankatori to face James Juno. An interesting first inning on both sides. Waltham... Started off by plating three runs in the top of the first. They did that on four hits. And also, uh, they, there was a walk and a hit batter, but none of those factored into the runs. John Hodge did score a, a, the third run on a wild pitch. And then Post 77 responded with a run of their own. Ronan Bates tripled, and then a sacrifice fly by Horning drove him in. As this is driven into center field, that'll get down. A leadoff single for John Pesson. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, will now step in. Well, the, Pe the Pesson brothers have been yeah, hitting the ball lately. the Pesson lately. brothers are a funny bunch. John Pesson had a pretty good game the other night against Hudson in the 2-1 to one loss. He went one for two at the plate with a triple, and he walked. Checking at first, runner back safe. The ball got away from the first baseman, but he was able to keep it in front of him. That's twice now that Juno has thrown over and almost thrown it away. Slight lead for Pesson. Not quite sure whether the first baseman is experienced or not, based on the way he's holding Pesson on. Pitch down low, 1-0. and oh. John Pesson got the day off yesterday. 
He needed it. He really needed it. Yeah, especially in a week like this where you're playing five games in a row, you got to give guys nights off. That one up high, 2-0. Oh. Brad Seymour was killing the ball in BP today, and they're playing deep. He's got a huge gap in right center. Must be 100 feet between them. Another low pitch, 3-0. and oh. Runner going to take off from first to throw up. Not in time. John Peston advances on the wild pitch. Well, he's not as fast as his brother. Brad Seymour had a pretty good day yesterday at the plate. He went one for three in the victory against Newton. Wind up and the pitch. Ooh, chin music draws the walk as he gets some uh, cheers from his teammates. Drew Rankatori will step in, the Hopkinton Hiller. One of two Hopkinton Hillers on this post-77 team. Cole Glassburn, his Hiller teammate, is due up next. Will they put the bump play on here to move the runners over? First baseman. Bunt pulled back in, 1-0. Good third idea. baseman, third baseman playing even with the bag. So if he wants to drop one down, he, he can. Gatori's gotten the last couple games off, but back in the starting lineup tonight. Bunt pulled back, and that pitch is going to get by, and now the runner, both runners are going to advance. And a hit pitch. Must have hit him in the shoe or something. And the, Yeah, they're going to call a hit batter. He'll take it. Bases loaded, no outs for post 77. Cole Glassburn, who's at third base today, stepping into the batter's box. I emailed this coach earlier today without your permission. I told him he was... Uh, Doing a great job out there at second base defensively. He's playing third tonight. Gave him a B-plus so far in the year. Coach replied back, good. He's getting some good coaching then. He certainly has been playing well. And he can tag it. Big opportunity here for post 77. Now pitch inside, 1-0. and Bases juiced, no outs. No pressure on Cole here. John Pesson on third, Brad Seymour at second, Drew Rankatori at first. Infield playing in, except for shortstop in second. And this is up the middle, past the reach of the first baseman. The second baseman able to grab it, flips the first. They get an out, but a run comes around to score. John Pesson comes around. It's a 3-2 game, a sacrifice, 4-3 RBI ground out for Cole Glassburn. Moving up to third is Seymour. Rankatori up to second. Dom Cavanaugh to step into the batter's box. Now a little revenge for Dom Cavanaugh. Tying run at third base. That one inside, 1-0. One oh. I don't know whether uh, Waltham has another spare player, but... If Juno gets in trouble, his relief is going to come from the field. Well, they listed 10 on the lineup. I believe two players did show up late, so I believe they do indeed have 10. One and one count now on Kavanaugh. But it would not be out of the unusual to see a relief pitcher come from the field. Leg lift and the pitch. Down low. Juno having some control issues out there. Yeah, Ronan Bates is chomping at the bit on the on-deck circle. Bates already has a triple in this game and a run scored. He's the uh, Ashland Legion equivalent of Xander Bogarts. That pitch is down low, three and one. Bogarts hadn't had a triple all year. He has two in consecutive nights. But you, of course, know that, right? Of course. Mm. Juno set to deal. And that's a walk. <laughs> Bases are now reloaded. Ronan Bates, the second baseman, stepping in. But first, we'll have an infield conference on the mound. 
And uh, also the coach for Walt Dam will join. Walt Dam is coached by Yvonne Cologne, managed by Mike Peterson. I thought it was Cologne. But there's blood in the water here. There certainly is. This is a huge opportunity for post 77. Well, Larry, it's been a wild uh, game to say the least so far. Yeah. Junot's having a little difficulty like Kavanaugh had in the first inning. You know, for a week with um, five games, we haven't had the real wild one yet. Maybe this is it. The one where the circus music starts to play? That's right. The March of the Gladiators. Sun's starting to glare back out on the right side of the field. Line up and the pitch. There's a called strike, 0 and 1. Nothing I like better than a bunch of overthrows from the opposing team. Then I can turn the music on in my head. <laughs> Juno set to deliver. And this is up the middle, and the second baseman going to bobble it. A run comes around to score. The throw to first is in time. But the run has scored as Brad Seymour comes around to tie things up at three apiece. So that is a sacrifice. Four to three RBI ground out by Ronan Bates. Up to third is Rankatori. Up to second, Kavanaugh. Jackson Horning stepping into the batter's box. We have ourselves a new ball game here in the bottom of the second. It's a nothing, nothing game now. Jackson Horning would love to would love to change that. Two on, two outs. There's a strike to Horning. He is certainly overdue for a hit, Larry. Well, he came within five feet of jerking one out of here last time up. He did have the RBI sacrifice actually last inning to drive in Ronan Bates. So he remains one for nine on the week. That pitch down low, one and one. I think Juno and Kavanaugh are about tied for pitches thrown in two innings. Yeah, we've seen a whole lot of great pitching. Uh, this week, but could be an offensive affair. Check swing, not able to hold, one and two. Ooh, I'm not so sure. I don't think he held, I think he just went around. Let's not him, let's him get no squabble about it. The one, two. Inside, shin music. That's about the third time this inning he's thrown it up and in. High and tight. Here is the 2-2 pitch. And this is tattooed to left field, but foul. Count remains two and two on the righty. Jackson Horning, tremendous athlete out of Ashland High School. Gets a piece of this one, and that's going to go over towards the wall. That'll drop right before the wall. One run in. Here comes another run. Hornung is going to be stopped at second, and just like that, post 77 back on top. A two RBI double for Jackson Hornung. Drew Rankatori coming around to score. Dom Cavanaugh coming around to score. A four-run inning for post 77. Zach Pess in the first baseman steps in. He's Jackson's usually such a reckless runner. I thought he'd be standing on third right now. A 5-3 lead for Ashland. How quick the tables have turned in this one. And the chairs, too. Funny 
guy. Yes. The 1 0 pitch to Zach Peston. Steps off the mound to take a look over at second. Right fielder standing in a little sun. Playing pest in the pole here. Checking at second, and this time he'll throw. Corning slides back safely. He's taking chances, you know. Very low odds of getting a pickoff at second base. During the, high the, oops, sorry. during the high school season, Horning hit a 449 for the Clockers. He was right in the discussion with Stevie Simos. It certainly was. For MVP. In my opinion, it really could have went either way. And you throw Ben McKenzie in the mix. Yep. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a miss. 1-2. and two. Well, it has been a nice rally here in this bottom of the second for post 77. Zach Pesson reaches. Post 77 will bat around in the inning. And there's strike three. That will retire the side, but not before. Post 77 plates four runs, and they lead it five to three as we head to the top of the third on HCAM, HCAT, and WACA TV. Top of the third inning, a 5-3 to three lead for post-77. Whole lot of scoring so far this evening. 3-4 and 5 due up for Waltham. Ryan Williams, John Hosh, and James Juno as the left fielder Ryan Williams steps in. Tom Cavanaugh had a rough first inning, but in the second inning, got out of it after facing only three hitters. That pitch down low, 1-0. Got the same umpiring crew as last night, I'm told. They just swap positions. Line up in the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to center field. And that is going to drop before the wall as Williams going to come around over to second base. And he'll round second base towards third, but then head back to the second base bag. A stand up double for the left fielder. And now the cleanup man, John Hodge, will step in. That's some good hitters at the front end of their lineup. They certainly do. I was almost out. I don't think Waltham's going to go away without a fight. I think Dominic's going to mix in some breaking stuff, get his changeup going, teeing off on his fastball. As that's fouled away. Oh and one count. Even the on deck hitter can time up a fastball. If they're paying attention. Cavanaugh deals. There's a strike. Oh and two. Cold glass brim playing even with the bag. Infield even. And he swings for that one. It was dropped by the catcher. He'll throw up the first, no problem. One away. Runner on second, one out. James Juno, the pitcher, to step in. That's the third very good defensive play by Sean Jewett. Got a back pick, thrown out a runner at second base, and dropped a strike three and threw the runner out without making the uh, second baseman take advantage going to third base. So he's doing... He's having himself a game. <laughs> Gotta get a hit yet, though. It's all right. As long as he, he's contributed defensively. As that one went off of Kavanaugh's glove, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first. In time. What a play by Bates. Burner doesn't like it at all. Coach doesn't like it at all. I like it, though. Four to three for the out. Ryan Williams does advance the third. Two outs in the inning. Alex Miller, the third baseman, to step in. Yeah, well, that was certainly a close play over there at first, but I'll give it to him. Of course, the only thing that matters is if the umpire gives it to him. 
But the umpire did have his eyes on it the whole time, so I'm trusting he made the right call. Well, he does have spectacles on, so that's always throw that into question. Not saying he's missed Magoo, but that was a pretty close play. From the stretch, the 0 1. There's strike two. I think that was a little gift, we'll say. Kavanaugh set to deal. There's strike three, punches him out. And that is the end of the top of the third. A five to three lead for post 77 as we head to the bottom of the third on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the third inning, coming up for post 77, five, six, and seven as Sean Jewett, the catcher, steps in, followed by John Pesson and Brad Seymour. Post 77 hoping to continue on with the momentum that they had in the bottom of the second, a four run inning for Ashland, and it's now a five to three ball game. Swing and a miss. Didn't get cheated one. there. Third baseman is playing him to pull, pull, pull. He's about three feet off the off the line. The 0 1 from Juno. And this is fouled away. Well, there's your pull. Well. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. One away. Did not look good on that swing. It's like he was casting out for fish. Let's take a look at what happened in the bottom of the second in case you missed it. John Pesson started off with a single. Brad Seymour then walked. Drew Rancatori was hit by a pitch that loaded the bases. Cole Glassburn with a sacrifice ground out to drive in John Pesson. And then Dom Cavanaugh would walk to reload the bases. Ronan Bates would have a sacrifice ground out. That would drive in a run as there is strike one of John Pesson. That would drive in Brad Seymour. And then a two RBI double by Jackson Hornung would score Drew Rancatori and Dom Cavanaugh. A big gap again out in right center field. Called strike there, 0 and 2. I think Juno has established that inside part of the plate. He's buzzed a few guys in there and he's getting a couple calls already this inning on inside pitches. There's the 0 2. That's going to get by the catcher, 1 and 2. One out for post 77, bases are clear. Just don't understand that outside, that outfield positioning. Sort of begging for a gapper out there. John Pesson would love to give him one. He's one for one on the day. Scored one of the four runs last inning. As this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three. On the out, very late out call by the umpire. And Brad Seymour will step in. Shortstop got a uh, Sunday hop. Otherwise it would have probably been trouble. Brad Seymour walked in the second inning and scored one of the four runs. That one inside, 1-0. and oh. One of the few breaking pitches Juno has thrown. one oh pitch. Went back to back with his breaking stuff. That one was low. Anything hit on the ground, it's going to be a challenge for Waltham to throw Brad Seymour out. There's strike one. Two and one on Seymour.
Brad Seymour graduated Holliston High School this year. Takes strike two there. He hit a 333 during the high school season. 18 for 54 overall. Scored 10 runs, drove in six. One of the key offensive contributors on the Holliston Panthers. Holliston finished the season with 10 wins and 11 losses, including a playoff appearance. As this is up the middle, and that's going to be a gapper. A two out single for Seymour. With Rankatory up, I have a feeling that uh, they're going to let Brad Seymour go on the bases. Rankatory was hit by a pitch in the last inning and scored one of the four runs. He was attempting to lay down a couple of bunts. Get hit in the foot. That pitch up high, runner taking off from first. The throw up is not in time. Stolen base by the speedy Brad Seymour. Coach Johnson giving some direction to uh, Drew Rancatori. Base hit will score a run from second, easy. Line up in the pitch, down low. Any bobble by the catcher, Seymour will have third. Two outs, Seymour will go on the crack of the bat. Here's the 2-0. Quite a lead off a second for Seymour. That one low, good eye, 3-0. It's going to be a take situation. Wait for Glassburn to come up and hit. And Drew Rancatori adding on to the on base percentage, which was at a 364 heading into this game as he draws a walk. And that's after being hit by a pitch last inning. And now Cole Glassburn will step in. The lefty will. Get an opportunity here with two outs, two on. I feel good about his A-B right now. Check in, or near check in at second. Juno does hold on to it. Big leads by both runners. That pitch outside. First baseman playing behind Rancatori. He can go really as far as he wants. Cole Glassburn having a pretty good season, hitting a 278, 350 on base percentage coming into this game. Swing and a miss. He's one fooled. One. He's fooled by that pitch. Did yeah. not look good. That was a nice breaking ball, though. Notice whenever there is runners on, Juno takes significantly longer between pitches. He has slowed things down for sure. Absolutely right. Swing and a miss, one and two. Didn't get cheated on that swing for sure. You got a favorite in the World Cup, Tom? I think France is going to take it. <laughs> Viva la France. I do love the underdog story of Croatia. That's in Africa, isn't it? We're back to second. Or Australia, maybe. Eastern Europe. Oh, all right. I was awful by a little bit. Yeah, we're going to send you back to geography class. Well, maybe it was in the... The one-two. Swing and a miss. I oh, know he might have got a piece of it. And he did. Got the foul tip on it. Just by a hair, he's standing up there. Count remains one and two on Glassburn. Two outs, two on. Glassburn in his only at bat had a sacrifice RBI ground out. That was a part of the four run second inning as that one's fouled away. Not as good of a crowd as it was last night. Probably half full tonight. 
Yeah, not a bad turnout at all, though. Glassburn is able to reach. Dom Cavanaugh would step in. Both runners with a big lead. Juno deals. And the runners are going to take off the throw to third. Is going to get into the outfield. And now Seymour is going to come around to score. And it is going to be a 6-3 to three game. So Seymour steals third. Rankatori steals second. And then Seymour comes around on the errant throw by the catcher. And that is exactly what post 77 wanted there. Well, that's Coach Johnson's stock and trade, aggressive base running. Well, I admit Drew Rankatori doesn't have blazing speed, so. Well, they like to test the opposing catcher. See if he can make that throw up the third base line. And that time he couldn't. Well, he had the advantage with a lefty in the batter's box, so it wasn't as if he was blocked out. It was a great slide by Seymour, though. He's a sneaky base runner. Dom Cavanaugh on deck. That pitch is low, and Cole Glassburn draws the walk. Top of the order, four post 77. Here comes Dom Cavanaugh. It's the third inning, and this is Dom Cavanaugh's third at bat of the game. Third. Juno has got to be laboring a little bit. He's throwing a lot of pitches now. Third plate appearance of the game, I should say. Yeah, you wonder what the leash is with Juno and what Waltham has with the lack of players tonight as far as pitching is concerned. That pitch is low, 1-0. It's pretty unfortunate for Waltham. I mean, they have a roster of about 15, 16 kids. They're 6-7 and seven right in the hunt for a playoff spot. But they just uh, have not been able to field as many players as they would like. But they do have really good restaurants on Moody Street and Main Street. They certainly do. Spent some time in the Watertown area. Spent a lot of time in Waltham. Very nice place. So a lot of those bistros and nouveau riche places. A lot of Greek restaurants. Checking at second, runner slides back safe. The uh, Chateau uh, Italian restaurant chain started in Waltham. Now they're all over. Metro West. Dom Cavanaugh trying to help his own cause here. Ooh. Takes that one inside, little chin music. Been a lot of music played tonight there, Tom. Certainly is. I know Juno likes to work the inside corner, but he's just not hitting his spots. I don't think anything's intentional. He's just going to get Dom Cavanaugh mad. There's a strike. Two one count. Two on, two outs, a run in. Seymour came around to score. There was a double steal and then an errant throw to third. And that'll make the count three and one. Fans out in right field of trying to grab that last bit of sun. I'll tell you, the sunlight is going to become an issue in this game if it continues going this way. Or the lack thereof. Right. And this is up the left side and past the shortstop. The lead runner going to be waved around. Here comes Rankatori to score. And that is going to make it a 7-3 to three ball game. An RBI single. For Kavanaugh. Was that, uh, I didn't see that play. Was that the haunted house infield? It was. It did take a hop on the infield. So the haunted infield working for Ashland that time. Now Ronan Bates is going to step in. He's got a three-bagger to his name tonight. He's having a great day at the plate. A triple and a sacrifice RBI ground out. Batting 1,000. Two on, two outs, two more runs in. And it's a 7-3 lead as that's fouled off. Well, 
Well, the Ashland High School's baseball field is kind of unplayable, isn't it? I'm not sure. The high school games are held down here. Well, I believe they have the, one of the issues there is they have the field facing in the wrong direction. So the sun beats down in the batter's eyes. Wind up in the pitch. Low wild pitch, it gets by the catcher. Both runners are going to easily advance. Good read by Cole Glassburn. Saw it was in the dirt and took off right away. So did Dom Cavanaugh. Yeah, no. Good quick call there by the third base coach, Jake Ovid. Juno set to deal. There's a called strike. Two up next is Jackson Horning. Ronan had his struggles at the plate last year. Seemed to have picked it up this year. The 1-1. One, one. Outside. Pro 77 hoping to continue this rally on. And it looks like Waltham is just going to ride James Juno for as long as they possibly can. Late time call by the hitter. Looked like Craig Trimble last night. Batter call time. He was staring at third base. Umpire got out of the way, the batter got out of the way, and he still threw it. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air over to left field, and it is caught for the third out of the inning as Ryan Williams is able to backtrack and make the catch. But post 77 plates two more runs, and it's a 7-3 game as we head to the top of the fourth on WACA TV and HCAN. Top of the fourth inning, 7, 8, and 9 do up for Waltham post 156. Justin Moore in the first baseman, Rob Daly the catcher, and Calvin Kanani the center fielder. And Larry, I understand you have a pitch count update on our we starters. We do. Mr. Junot is at 84 pitches, and Dom Kavanaugh is at 47. So he's going to hang around for a while after that r very rough first inning where he threw 31 pitches. So doing the math, he's thrown 16 pitches in the next two innings. Well, the tables have certainly turned in this one. He bends one over to plate. Oh, and one count on Morin, who was hit by a pitch in his only at-bat back in the first inning. That's fouled away. Back-to-back -back breaking pitches for Kavanaugh. They were really sitting on his fastball earlier in the game. Time Once you get called. confident with that breaking pitch, you want to throw it all the time. The 0-2. Oh, my goodness. Jouette was trying to frame that one, but the umpire didn't bite. One and two. Line up and the pitch. And this is a slow roller up the left side. Picked up by Glassburn. Throw to first. It's a beauty. Five to three. Four out number one. Little hot dog in there by Cole Glassburn. Throwing off his back foot. Rob Daly, the catcher, will step in. Rob Daly struck out and is only at bat in this game. Well, Dom Cavanaugh has certainly settled down since the first inning where he gave up three runs. He has just been cruising through these last several hitters. That one low, 1-0. One oh. Well, we're about an hour from uh, sunset, if your uh, timing's correct. Red Sox are losing 2 nothing against the Texas Rangers. Kavanaugh set to deal. 
There's a strike. Two and one. Daly was just admiring that pitch there. Right down the middle. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Last two hitters, lots of breaking stuff from Dominic Cavanaugh. That pitch just a little bit high, full count. The decisive pitch. Oof, a little bit low, and that'll draw the walk. Calvin Kanani, the center fielder, will step in. One on, one out. Kavanaugh working from the stretch. Do all the... Batter show bunt and have the runner take off. That one low, nice block by Jewett, who is just full of great defensive work tonight. He's gonna be sore. Lucas Gustafson is throwing tomorrow night. Seven to three lead, four post 77 here in the fourth. There's a strike. And that's probably why Gossifson's getting the night off tonight. Rest up for tomorrow's big start against undefeated Lowell. That one low. This is going to get by Jouette. And Daly advances on the wild pitch. Two one pitch. Coming up. Get the number nine hitter. This is one of those games, just when you think it, it's going to pick up speed a little bit, it slows right back down. There's a strike, two and two. Time called. Cavanaugh deals. Inside, full count. Well, now you wonder if uh, he walks this hitter, if that bullpen will get up and going again. His pitch count is still pretty reasonable. Straight three. There it is. Straight three, out number two. That'll bring up Tom Mazoulis, the right fielder. Mazoulis is one for two today, doubled and reached on an error. He did score one of the three runs in the top of the first. That double was a smash, though. Certainly was. Walt Dam has not scored since that top of the first. I see blue and blue and red lights out in center field. Hopefully, not giving parking tickets. Wind up and the pitch. That one low. Last night that would have been a strike. 2-0 oh count. Wind up in the pitch. Upstairs. Yeah. Looks like some of the players uh, giving their keys to one of the T 
team assistance to go move some cars around. That's good for him. They must be parked on the wrong side. There's a strike. Three and one. That's what assistant coaches are supposed to do, right? That's right. Be valets for the... <laughs> I'm parked in the makeshift parking lot out there. There's a strike. Runner is going to take off from second. Kind of picked off. And now the throw to third. They got him. That's an out. Rob Dilly caught stealing for the third out. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth, post 77, leading Waltham 7 to 3 on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, 3, 4, and 5 due up for post 77. Jackson Horning to start things off, followed by Zach Pesson and Sean Jewett. A new pitcher for Waltham, Calvin Kanani, has taken over. He moves over from center field. And then moving over from left field to center is Ryan Williams. Alex Miller moves the left field from third base. Justin Morin moves from first to third. And the starting pitcher, James Juno, over at first base. As the first pitch is ball one to Jackson Horning. And what's the rule on uh, daylight situation? You got to get in how many innings? Well, official game would at least be four and a half. Line up in the pitch. Up the left side, and that is going to go off the glove of the shortstop. And Jackson Hornung turns around first, but will head back. A leadoff single for Hornung. It did go off the glove, but it took an awkward hop. I'm giving him the single on that one, Larry. Yes, I would. Def definitely good effort on his part, but the haunted infield rears its ugly head again. It's really a shame. Zach Pesson steps in. We'll see what uh, his move is, if any. Swing and a miss. The pitcher that uh, is not that fast to the plate. It was pop time here for Speedy Jackson Horning. Johnny set to deal. That one low and. Uh, Horning thought about taking off, but was coached back to the first base bag. Yeah, he slammed on the brakes there. He had two hard crossover steps. Checking at first, slides back just safe. Wasn't expecting that type of quality pickoff move, but. James Juno, the starting pitcher for Waltham. We'll get you the line on him in just a moment as this is hit in the air over to right center and it's caught by the new center fielder, Ryan Williams, one on, one out. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. So James Juno, who was still in the game over at first base, was the starting pitcher. He went three innings, giving up six hits, seven runs, six of those runs were earned, walked four, struck out two, and had two wild pitches. Sean Jewett's been in five defensive plays tonight. Won the in the last inning. He has been outstanding defensively. What a catcher he has turned into. Checking at first. Back safely is Horning. Well, more than likely, we are probably going to have a, the game end early due to sunlight. As this is hit in the air over to right field, and that's a fair ball. That'll get down for a hit. Hornung being waved around to third base. The throw is off the mark. Hornung's safe, and that'll put runners on the corners with one out. Another bomb by Jewett. He is one for three today. As he gets his first hit of the game there, and now John Pesson will step into the batter's box. Everybody in the lineup has reached base today. Total uh, footage on Sean Jewett today for balls in play is uh, that 50-footer he hit back to the pitcher and that 100-footer for the base hit. Runner taking off from oh, first. And the pitcher still has it, and it's a balk, they're going to say. And now coming around to score is Jackson Hornung. A balk by the pitcher. And things just falling apart very quickly for Waltham. 
shows the inexperience of the pitcher. It's now an 8-3 game. Line up and the pitch. That one's going to get by the catcher. An easy advance by Sean Jewett, the third. Wild pitch. Give that man some oxygen. John Peston, one for two today. Singled in the second, grounded out in the third. Also scored a run in the second. Walt and Minfield coming in all the way in. There's a ball. Two-0 count. Kanani from the stretch. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Flailing up there, his head was heading out to our direction. Pulled his head off. And this is hit high in the air over to right field. Foul territory, no catch is made. And a good dive attempt by Mazoulis, but not able to reel it in. Jewett was prepared to tag. He was just standing on the bag. Two and two. He's hitting some bombs tonight. Kanani from the stretch, the two two. That's fouled away. I'm surprised Sean Jewett is not shuffling down the third base line, given Kalani's inexperience there. Maybe he can induce another balk. From the stretch, takes a look at third and deals. And he got a foul tip on that one. Two and two remains the count. Runner on third, one out, one run already in due to a balk. And this is right up the left side. That'll get through. Into left field it goes. Jewett comes around to score. Post 77 rallies on. It's 9-3. to three. An RBI single for John Pesson. Well, I mean, if daylight's going to be an issue, I know nobody likes to strike out on purpose, and it sort of is illegal. Lay down a bunt. But Brad Seymour, I think he wants to uh, try to remain perfect today. He's one for one with a walk, and he scored two runs. Want to make sure it becomes an official game. Well, all they have to do is get the next half inning in, and then we're good. I got a little bit of time to do that. I brought my blanket so I can, just in case it gets really dark. Line up in the pitch, upstairs. 2 and 0 to Seymour. Now here's a strategy for Waltham. You just keep walking, guys, until the sun goes down? <laughs> it's a possibility. Well, every time they throw a pitch, just wave at it. But then you got to come back here and finish the game, so you probably don't want to do that. No. With the traffic and all that, no. There's a called strike, 2 and 1. Well, the bats have come alive tonight for post-77. First three games this week, they put up 10 runs. Certainly wasn't a bad offensive performance yesterday in the 6-3 to three win over Newton. But the two games before that, the offense was not really happening for post-77. But they are certainly on tonight. Nine to three lead, wind up and the pitch. Down low and that's a walk. That is going to load up the base, or excuse me, it's gonna be two on with one out. Pesson nope. moves up to second, Seymour to first. Stepping into the batter's box is Rankatori. Now Waltham played last night, right? 
They did. They walked off with a win against Sudbury, 5-4. to four. So they used up a pitcher there. Well, they are certainly missing some players tonight. They only had nine show up, and they have a roster with 18 players on it. So they are missing nine players. They do have an extra uniform for our cameraman, Connor. He's ready to go. He's in the age limit. He did offer his services. That's Drew Rankatori will step in. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland Allegiant Baseball. Connor Donovan, our cameraman. Fourth game of the week, four post 77. Things going very well so far. That pitch up high, 1-0. A 9-3 lead for Ashland. They have scored in every inning of this game. One in the first, four in the second, two in the third, and so far two in this fourth. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, one and one. They won't be uh, stealing any bases on this Waltham team. Coach Johnson showing some respect. Drew Rankatori was hit by a pitch and walk so far today, but did score two runs and stole a base. And gets a piece of this one up to right field. It goes, and that's foul. Ooh, collective groan by the Ashland bench. Drew Rankatori and Cole Glassburn are the only two in the lineup without a hit. They have contributed, but they don't have a hit. That pitch low. No crying in baseball, though, Tom. We've Certainly. discussed this. Well, in Rankatori's case, a hit by a pitch and a walk. And in Glassburn's case, a sacrifice RBI ground out and a walk. So it's not really that bad that they don't have a hit. Wind up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one over to right center, and it's caught. But both runners are going to tag, or at least one of them is going to tag. To third he goes. John Pesson advances. He tattooed that ball, but can, uh, the center fielder, Ryan Williams, was playing very deep. Good hustle on the home plate umpire. He was down at third base ready to make a call. Two on, two outs. Pesson at third. Over at first, it's Seymour still. Cole Glassburn will step in. When they kick up dust, and this field is dusty, Whew, it's hard to see. Well, there's been a whole lot of action on the base paths tonight. Checking at first, Seymour back safe. He won't take off. I doubt he'll take off. Might try and induce a balk or something. Line up in the pitch. Upstairs. And he's going to take off, throw to second, is going to be dropped by the shortstop. And now John Pesson going to come around to score. How about that? Sort of surprises me. I didn't think it, they would put a play on being this far ahead. Why not at this point? I think their mentality is if you get out of this inning, you get the top of the fifth in and walk away with this thing. But if not, they make a mistake, you score a run. So it kind of works out for you. Brad Seymour over at second on the stolen base. John Pesson comes home on the drop by the shortstop. So you could, I'd consider that an error by the shortstop, wouldn't you? As this is hit in the air, over to left center, ranging back, making the catch is Ryan Williams. Excuse me, Alex Miller. Ryan Williams was the starting left fielder. And that will be the third out of the bottom of the fourth. But post-77 plates three more runs. And they lead it 10-3 to three as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the fifth inning, top of the order for Waltham. Tom Azulis, Matt Johnson, Ryan Williams. Tom Cavanaugh remains on the mound. He's pitched very well since that first inning where he gave up three runs and four hits. Since then, he's only given up a hit. And that's, that's it, besides a couple of walks, but no runs. So it's turned out to be a good night on the mound for Kavanaugh. This is a gapper up the right side and a leadoff single for Mazuis. Now this could very likely be the last inning of the game due to sunlight. It will be an official game once this half inning is in. That's of course unless Waltham somehow manages to take the lead as Matt Johnson steps in. 
And then we'd have to play the bottom of the fifth, of course, for the official game. And there's a strike. Did Vernon have any chance with that? Or was it the infield caused that one to squirt through? Uh, I just think it was a well-hit ball. It just found the gap. No fault of the infielder. There's strike two to Johnson. Thomas Zulis has had a pretty good day for Waltham. He's two for three, doubled, singled, and reached on an error, also scored a run. That pitch down low. One and two on Matt Johnson, who is one for two. Had an RBI single in the first inning. Some bullpen activity for Ashland, perhaps. Sternick getting up along with Thomas Ellie. That pitch, a called ball, maybe slightly high, two and two. Cole Glassburn in on the cut of the grass. Or thought about taking off from first, but holds up. Right back to Kavanaugh goes. Throw to second for one. Throw to first for two. Double play. They'll go one, six, three on the double play. Twin killing there. We haven't seen many of those this year. That'll bring up Ryan Williams, the left fielder. Well, if post 77 is. Able to hang on, which they should. They will improve to 10 and 3 on this season. And be two full games above third place, Medford. That pitch inside, 1 and 0. Of course, only five games left to play in the regular season. Medford should come here, correct? Since uh, 77 went to Medford? They will be. They didn't play Medford at all yet. They'll actually oh. be there Sunday, and then Medford comes here Monday. So a whole lot of Medford in the next few days for post-77. They could make it easy on themselves and just play a doubleheader on Sunday, call it a day. And I'd say uh, obviously there's five games left, but if you win at least one of those games, you're in pretty good shape. Which, of course, Ashland's going to try to win both of them. Well, I am in good shape. Hopefully the Ashland Legion will stay in good shape. Thanks very much. I have no comment for that. Here is the 2-0. That's fouled away. 2-1. What well, they say? The camera adds 15 pounds to you? For you, it actually adds about 30. 50. <laughs> Andrew Sternick getting loose for post-77 in case he's needed. And this is hit high in the air. It is in foul but playable territory and caught by the first baseman, Zach Pesson. That is the third and final out of the top of the fifth. To the bottom of the fifth, we may go. We'll keep you informed. You're tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM. Continuing on into the bottom of the fifth, how long we will go, who knows. Top of the order for post 77. Tom Cavanaugh stepping in, a new pitcher for Waltham. Rob Daly has moved over from catcher. He takes over as pitcher. The new catcher, I believe, is Calvin Kanani. No, I think Kanani went from pitching to center field, I think. Oh, are you sure about that? The is short it number kids. seven over there in center field? Yeah, short kids. I thought the catcher was wearing number seven. In any case, Rob Daly's the pitcher, and he deals strike one. Oh, <laughs> Dominic Cavanaugh did not like that at all. Now I'm assuming this game has about 25 minutes before daylight becomes a real issue. Now pitch inside, one and one. Approaching 8.54. Or 7.54? It was 8.54. This game would have been over a yeah, while ago. Would. All right. And this is tattooed into left center. That'll get that for a hit. It rolls all the way to the wall. Kavanaugh around first, heading over to second. 
And that is going to be a double for Dom Cavanaugh. There was no way he was going to try and leg that out. No way. Certainly not. Ronan Bates will step in. Bates is 0 for, or excuse me, 1 for 2 with a triple. Also has a sacrifice RBI ground out. He also scored a run in the first, the only run in the first. 077 has scored in every inning in this game. Of course, they have yet to score in the bottom of the fifth, as there's a strike. But they scored one in the first, four in the second, two in the third, three in the fourth. And that has made it a 10 to three lead for post 77. Waltham has not scored since the top of the first. Line up and the pitch. This is hit high in the air over to right field. Could be trouble, but coming way in to make the catch is Missoulis. Nice defensive work there, one away. Kavanaugh remains at second. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung. Hornung's having a terrific day at the plate. He's two for two with an RBI sacrifice fly out. Look at, look at how deep the outfield is playing. They're about five foot in front of the uh, fence. There's a strike. You have two RBI double in the second and also singled in the fourth and scored a run. Can't play much deeper than they're playing out there. Ooh, Ooh that went off his bat. That's a foul ball. 0-2. Oh <laughs> Laughing it off. It's a cheap strike. It's as cheap as it gets. Goodness gracious. Teammates are loving it. Ten hits on the day for post 77. Oh, that hit him. <laughs> Took one right off the hip. First yeah. and second, one out. Call on ambulance. Zach Pesson will step in. You know, remember when you used to get hit by a wiffle ball when you were younger? I do. <laughs> Those moments haunt me. <laughs> That's what that felt like on Jackson Hornham. And this is tattooed to left center and ranging to his right to make the catch is the center fielder. And that is going to be the second out. Here comes the defensive star of the game and maybe the offensive star of the game. Runners remain on first and second. Sean Jewett, one for three at the plate, singled last inning and scored a run. But he had that 50-foot pop out to the pitcher in the first inning, or second inning, that blast. Gets a piece of this one up the middle, and it's picked up by the third baseman who just lays the tag on Kavanaugh, who was forced to head over to third, and that will be the third out of the bottom of the fifth. So it is the first inning of the game that nobody scores for post 77, but they do lead it 10 to three as we head to the top of the sixth on HKM and WACA TV. Top of the sixth inning, a new pitcher for post 77, Andrew Sternick on the hill to take over for Dom Cavanaugh. Dom Cavanaugh has remained in the game, however, he will patrol left field. Secret Kavanaugh. weapon is in there now on the mound. Yeah, Kavanaugh went five innings, giving up six hits, three runs, all of which were earned. Two walks, three strikeouts. And most of that came in the top of the first, but since then, he was very solid. As there is strike one of John Hodge, the second baseman. Well, I guess he's the, uh, Sternick is the Craig Kimbrell of the post-77 team. He's worked six and a third of an inning so far this season. That pitch just outside, one and one. Sternick uh, has a 5.52 ERA on the season. Upstairs. John Hodge, James Juno, and Alex Miller do up for Waltham. That's fouled away. 
Well, Two strikes. Yep, full count now. Well, in a situation where it's... Out of hand? Yeah, it's out of hand. It's starting to get a little dark out. Not quite sure why we're playing into the six, but we are. Well, they're getting some lighting in now. Some people are turning on their headlights. And this is up the middle on the ground. It goes, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, no problem. Six to three. Four out number one, James Juno to step in. Jackson Horning stayed very low on that one. Make sure it didn't take a little crazy hop. He knows how to play this infield. Juno steps to the plate. Wind up in the pitch. And this is hit up the middle, bobbled by the second baseman, and he will reach safely. Now, I don't know I don't whether. Know. Is that an error, you think? Yeah. We'll <laughs> give him an error. Sorry. But I think he's trying to imitate, Sternick is trying to Im imitate uh, Kimbrell with his uh, arm hanging down to the side. Alex Miller steps in. It's the second error of the game for post 77. And that's going to get by Jouette, and the runner will advance. What are you giving that one? A pass ball or a wild pitch? Not going to lie, I kind of missed it. <laughs> uh, uh, he bounced it up there. All right, wild pitch it is. Leg left hand the pitch. Down low. Jewett saved Sternick from another wild pitch. Sternick set the deal upstairs. Mm. Uh, it must be a little bit of wind there. The dust is blowing our way. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Three one count. There's a strike, full count. A few chuckles from his teammates there, hoping for a K. Ready to erupt. There it is. Strike three out number two. <laughs> That'll bring up Justin Moore in the first baseman. They're really giving him the business. A 10-3 lead for post 77. The offense came alive today in the fourth game of the week for Ashland. And they're gonna win their third game of the week. A nasty breaking pitch there, 0 and 1. They're killing themselves since the dugout. They're loving it. Sternick is dealing. Having a howl. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. He threw that uh, 59 foot curveball. He's even having a good time with it. Nice job by Jewett keeping it in front of him. Waltham scored three runs in the top of the first. Things were looking scary for a moment, but then post 77, after scoring one in the bottom of the inning, they scored four more in the bottom of the second. As this is driven over to the shortstop, throw to first, no problem, six to three. On the out, Andrew Sternick with a solid inning on the mound for post 77. And it is 10 to 3 as we head to the bottom of the sixth on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM and Hopkinton, as well as HCAT in Holliston. Playing on into the bottom of the sixth, Andrew Sternick stepping in to lead things off in place of John Pesson. That pitch down low. 
Sternick took over on the mound in the last inning. Pitched a nice solid inning. In relief of Dom Cavanaugh, who started this game a little rough, but it turned into a nice start for him as he went five innings, giving up only three runs. A pitch inside, 2-0 and oh on Sternick. This is a running joke inside the dugout. They're calling Sternick Kimbrell. Brad Seymour due up next. And that is inside, chin music, 3-0. Very surprised they're playing on. It's, the sun is pretty much, well, it's almost set. It's Eight still kind of around, but it's definitely dark out there. It's getting substantially darker. And there's a four-pitch walk. Sternick's aboard. Brad Seymour to the plate. Let's see those wheels. I think he's going to steal. <laughs> That'd be so Bush. But <laughs> he's going to take a lead. <laughs> Maybe he'll get picked. Rob Daly, the pitcher for Waltham, set to deal. There's a strike. <laughs> Due up next is Drew Rancatori. Guess he's not that prolific of a base runner because their teammates are telling him to get more of a lead. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that's going to drop on the infield dirt. Sternick going to have to go to second to throw. They'll get one. So Seymour <laughs> reaches on the four to six fielder's choice. His teammates having a good laugh about the uh, little wow. trip at second by Sternick, but that's the worst situation to be in because you don't know where that ball's going to go if it's going to be caught by the second baseman. Then all had, of a sudden you got to run. Had some spin on it, so he was trying to play it halfway, and it got away from the second baseman, but not so far away he couldn't be forced out. So <laughs> Rankatori steps in. It puts this one in the air, and that is towards the fence, and that is a fair ball. That's going to be a ground rule double. So Drew Regatori will stay at second, and Brad Seymour moves up to third on the ground rule double. Took a hop on the field right over the wall. Second and third, one out. Cole Glassburn steps in. No, I don't think oh, that's a pinch hitter. Oh, this is a pinch hitter here. We'll have to get the details. I got to see the number. Well, that ball was hit about 320 feet. I believe Three, this is Matt Tomaselli batting. 328 down the lines here. 360 to left center. Matt Tomaselli getting an at bat. Swing and a miss. Well. Might as well give uh, some player, some players experience at the plate in this situation. Base hit will score two. There's a ball. Two one count on Thomas Selly. Got to have a good eye. Sun going well. Sun's all gone now. That Thomas Selly at a Holliston High School. That pitch way high. Matt graduated this year. Six foot one, 140 pounder. He's also made some uh, pitching appearances. There's a strike. Wind up in the pitch. Outside, he draws the walk. Bases loaded, four post 77. Dom Cavanaugh, to, or, yep, Dom Cavanaugh will take his at bat here. One out, bases loaded. Wind up in the pitch. And this is up the left side, takes a couple awkward hops on the grass. Bottled by the shortstop. Everybody's going to be safe. They're going to send another runner to try to score. Rankatori comes around. It ends up being two runs for post 77. And that, those bounces were so awkward. I'm giving him the single on that one. A two RBI single for Dom Cavanaugh. And coming around to score is Brad Seymour and Drew Rankatori. 
And it is a 12 to three ball game. And now we're gonna have a pinch hitter for Ronan Bates. Stepping in is Owen Ward. Last night's pitcher. One run away from the mercy. That one inside, one and oh. Well, looks like they will get the full game. <laughs> Up the left side, hopping on the grass, throw to first. It's in time. Six to three. Runners advance. One more base hit should be the end of this affair. Tomaselli up to third. A runner on second as well. As that is inside on Bates. Tom Cavanaugh over at second. And it's Tomaselli on third. This is hit in the air over to left field. Could be trouble. And that is going to be a fair, no foul. I don't know about that. I would have called the fair if it was the umpire. <laughs> I don't know about that one. That was foul, though. I was just hoping it was fair. Wind up in the pitch. That one's foul. I can't see it's dark out, Larry. Yeah, well, don't worry, I hold your hand. <laughs> I'm very surprised they're actually playing right now. It is pretty dark on that field. Wind up in the pitch. That hit him. Oh, no, they hit his bat. That's the second, that's a second time. time that's happened to him. But he should get hit on the next pitch as a result. That's right. That's what happened to him in his last at bat last inning. He's going to just swing for offenses right now. Gets a piece of this one, and that is foul. Good effort by the first baseman, Juno. One and two on Hornung. He could be star of the day with a walk off here. Certainly would be. This is up the left side and foul. Come on, come on. Keep it fair. I don't know if I've uh, seen a game go past uh, this point. Usually by... Oh, that's a balk. That'll score a, a run. Balk. There comes a run. He just dropped the ball like we discussed last night, and that's a balk. That should be... The end of the game, Thomas right? Thomas Selly comes around to score. Cavanaugh up to third. That should be the mercy. Let's see if it goes in effect. Apparently not. We're going to let this batter finish. You very rarely see that. Pitcher dropping a ball. He just got hit, didn't he? Foul ball. <laughs> yeah. And he's asking the infield ump. Any swing? Says nope. These umps want to keep playing, apparently. I think even Coach Johnson's starting to get frustrated. I don't know. Well, it's 8-18, five minutes from sunset. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two now on Horning. This is unbelievable. And it is 10 runs now, as this Ooh. is fouled over us. I couldn't even see it. That was sizzled. If I get hit at this point, I'm suing. Oh, 
13-3 lead for post 77, but we play on well into the darkness. And that hits Horning. Oh, mercy. Just mercy, please. Just go up there and strike out on purpose. Can a team surrender? Just just swing the bat three times. Let's go. Zach Coach, swing the bat three times. Zach Pesson steps in. Runners on the corners, two outs, three more runs in. Strike. <laughs> Just call it a strike, please. Wide up in the pitch. And this is up the left side, oh, and no. it is bobbled by the shortstop. Another run scores. No fair, no fair. Dom Cavanaugh comes around. You'll have to count up. Took an awkward hop. I don't know. I'm giving that. An, I'll give it a single. <laughs> You're a homer. Uh, but give it an error. Uh, Doesn't matter. You've got to count up when you look at this tape and see how many haunted house errors there were. There's Sean Jewett. 14 to three lead for post 77. Hey. There's a strike. I just wonder whose decision it is to play on right now. I mean, it must be the umpires. I think Jake Obid, the third base coach, decided to play on. <laughs> Just keep playing till 10 o'clock. Let's have another game after this. This is up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop. Flipped a second. There's the end of the inning, but who knows? We might play the top of the seventh. It is a 14-3 to three lead, four post 77. And uh, we'll see if we continue on. You're tuning in to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV and HCAM. Continuing on to the top of the seventh. We're going to get this full game in, folks. 14-3, Ashland leading Waltham. And now stepping to the plate is Calvin Kanani, the center fielder. Heads up with the lefty first. And that is up the left side foul. Balls like that. Oh, I guess they, uh, or excuse me, this is actually Rob Daly, the catcher. I guess they decided not to uh, put the mercy rules into effect. Since there was only a half inning left, why not? Hit in the air to left field and caught. Wow. He's got eyes like a bat. I missed that. Couldn't see it. Couldn't follow it. Calvin Kanani, the center fielder, will step in. That's fouled away. Where? Oh, and one. <laughs> Can our cameraman pick that up? Does he have the right aperture on his camera? That's a million dollar word for letting light in, isn't it? Well, we'll start doing the uh, wrap up now. <laughs> Post 77, going to improve to 10 and three on the season. Impressive offensive performance here today. They were able to put up a run in the first, four in the second, two in the third, three in the fourth, none in the fifth, but four more in the sixth. That one outside, one and two. <laughs> All of Waltham's <laughs> runs came in the top of the first. They haven't scored since that inning. Uh, you know, this is really dangerous for the hitters. It's dangerous for everybody, I think. This is hit in the air over to right field, and it is caught. Two away, down to the final out. But with the way this thing's going, maybe they'll just want to play some extra innings tonight. Why not? Why not? Everybody <laughs> get their licks in, Thomas, pad their batting averages. It's a double header tonight, by the way. There's a game after this. Right, right. T Tom Azulis will step in. 13 hits for post 77 in today's game. Fouled away. Walt Dam is going to fall to six and eight with the loss here today. Oh, 
Andrew Sternick getting some, uh, come on, Craig Chance. There he goes. He's hanging the arm. Yeah. Doing the Craig Kimbrell impression. One and two. See, we got to keep a camera on him uh, watching him do this impression. <laughs> yeah. There it is. There it is. It's just missing the beard, that's all. Ball two. Not quite as big a break on his uh, curveball as Kimbrell after he throws the 100 mile an hour sizzler. Oh, they're just killing themselves in the dugout. Full count. Did he just say 3 2? Yep. He better ring this kid up right now. Or I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't care where the pitch is. There's strike three. And that is the ball game. Ashland post 77 defeats Waltham 14 to 3. Ashland improves to 10 wins and three losses on the season. Waltham falls to six and eight. Tom Cavanaugh, the winning pitcher. Great offense all around for post 77. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and you have been watching Ashland Allegiant Baseball in HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, or HCAT in Holliston. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll talk to you again soon.